I'm Dr. Michael Rothman. I'm board certified in internal medicine and emergency medicine. I'm an attending physician at Rahway Hospital Emergency Department. I'm the medical director at MD Wellness and Aesthetics in East Brunswick, New Jersey. And tonight we're going to talk about something just incredibly important. More important than you can possibly imagine, and that's nutrition. Nutrition is so powerful in terms of uh, the difference between healthy and unhealthy. And I'm going to uh, talk to you tonight about just really how powerful it is. And I hope when you by the time you leave here tonight that you realize how important your nutrition is, um, what a difference it can make in your life, life-changing stuff. Nutrition as the foundation of health, how the foods you're eating may be hurting you. I want to start by introducing this book. It's called Nutrition and Physical Degeneration. This is written by Weston Price, who is a dentist. And Dr. Price traveled around the world in the 30s, 20s, and 30s. And he studied so-called primitive cultures, cultures that had never been exposed to Western diets. And his main focus was obviously on their teeth because he was a dentist, but he found some incredible things. He found that as soon as these people were exposed to Western diets, they started to develop tooth decay. And the shape of their face would change. It was incredible. Before they were exposed, they had perfectly shaped mouths. Look at these teeth. Perfect teeth, no cavities, no crowding in their mouths. <coughs> Perfect teeth. These people did not go to the dentist. They didn't brush. They didn't floss. They didn't get fluoride treatments. And they didn't have any tooth problems at all. They didn't need braces. They didn't have cavities. The other thing was they didn't have any chronic degenerative diseases either. They didn't have arthritis or diabetes or any of those things that we suffer with. Yet, here's living pictures here of these people. Perfect teeth, nothing crooked. Now, one generation after being exposed, look what happened. And we're not talking that these people went to McDonald's or Burger King. We're talking they started eating white bread and, and processed foods, just a little bit, introducing the diet. Within one generation, all of a sudden, they started developing all these terrible problems. And guess what? Not just in their teeth, but everywhere else. Heart disease, diabetes, arthritis, kidney problems, everything. Again, perfect teeth up here. And then as they're being exposed, crowded teeth. Perfect, crowded, cavities. Note the marked difference in the facial and dental arch. Now the other thing is that these people, and I can't honestly tell you that I can see this, but apparently the shape of their face actually changed as well. And these people started to develop sinus problems because their entire skull actually changed in shape from eating these foods. To me, this is incredibly powerful example of nutrition. Now this picture here is really amazing because if you look at it carefully and read the caption here, these are New Zealand Maoris. Note the progressive change in the facial form of the two younger boys as compared to their older sister. Then note the progressive change in their feet. Normal feet, flat feet, club feet. She's the oldest daughter. Mom was probably not exposed to cruddy food, western food. She has normal feet. He's got flat feet and he's got club feet. Within one generation, Nutrition and Physical Degeneration is the name of the book. Within one generation, from, and we probably see this to a certain degree in our society, some of the younger children may not be as healthy as the older children as, as the mother's nutritional status gets worse. By the way, if you, I'm, I'm going to be saying things tonight that you probably haven't heard. There may be some shock value here. If people want to ask questions, um, I certainly would welcome that, okay? Um, just raise your hand and I would acknowledge you. So I want everybody to stay awake. This book, Pottinger's Cats, had showed similar findings. Uh, Dr. Pottinger uh, was doing work with cats and he was feeding the cats a certain commercial diet, cooked foods, and he ran out of the cooked foods and he started ordering 
foods from an other distributor that were raw. So w without even trying, he actually set up an experiment, at least initially, where the cats uh, were eating cooked meat and cooked milk versus raw meat and raw milk. And he discovered within a few weeks, all of a sudden, these cats that were eating the raw food were so much healthier than the cats that were eating the cooked food. And so he decided to actually create an experiment around this. And he wrote this book. He, st he did the study over about 10 years. And he found that very quickly, the cats eating cooked food developed chronic degenerative diseases. And each successive generation got worse and worse. This went on for three generations. It never got to the fourth generation, because by the fourth generation, all the cats were sterile. It then took him three generations to regenerate normal cats again. Again, it shows you the power of nutrition. Now, in our society today, we see more and more chronic degenerative diseases. Name the disease, and it's pretty much epidemic. Name a disease. Asthma, diabetes, diabetes heart disease, high blood pressure, cancer, autism, allergies. Just name a disease. Every single one is epidemic at the same time. Now, why is this happening? Is it possible that it's because of our diets? Well, I hope by the time you leave here tonight, you're going to go, well, yeah, duh, of course it is. And I believe we're somewhere in the second or third generation of the Pottinger Cats study. We're seeing more and more of these diseases. Sterility and infertility is on the rise. I remember when I was a kid, birth control was the big thing. Everybody tried not to get pregnant. Now. It's so difficult for women to get pregnant these days. Everybody's trying to, you know, going to fertility clinics because their biochemistry and their nutritional status is so fouled up they can't even conceive. So I want to give you a little, so how does this happen? Why are some of the foods that we're going to eat bad for us? I want to explain on a scientific basis what is actually causing some of the phenomena. I'm going to keep it semi-simple. This is a s pared down. There's, it's very, very complex, obviously. But let's look at some things. I want to talk about the autonomic nervous system. This is our spine, or it's supposed to represent our spine. And here's our brain. And in the spine, we have what's called the spinal cord, and it connects to all these different organs that are shown here. And some of these organs are under, or all these organs, I should say, are under what's called autonomic control. Let me explain to you what autonomic control is. For example, I can move my arm back and forth. That's, that's voluntary control. Okay? But there's certain things that I can't necessarily tell my body to do. Can I make my heart rate go up or down? Can I make my pupils get bigger or smaller? Can I cause my blood pressure to rise or lower? Can I change my pupil size or start my digestion going or change my immune system? No, that's under autonomic control. And in fact, there's two ends of the autonomic nervous system. There's the sympathetic branch. We'll call this the gas pedal. This is also known as the fight or flight response. Anybody, you've heard of that, right? The fight or flight response? Now, imagine that a grizzly bear just busted through that door, OK? What would happen to your heart rate? It would go up. OK, how about your blood pressure? It would go up. What would happen to your pupils? Well, they actually would get big. Well, why? Why does this happen? This has been programmed into us through evolution so that we can survive that moment of fight or flight. So that grizzly bear is going to come in there, and if you're smart, you're going to run. And if you're dumb, you're going to try to fight the grizzly bear and become his lunch. <laughs> so we need to see in the dark so we can get away. We need to have our heart rate increase. We need to have a high sugar level in order to run from the grizzly bear. We don't need to be digesting our lunch when we're running from the grizzly bear. That's a waste of energy. We don't need to be pooping in our pants when we're running from the grizzly bear. That would be very messy. And we don't want to pee pee in our pants when we run from the grizzly bear. So all these things happen for a very specific reason. And it seems pretty cool, right? Think about that. That's the gas pedal. 